Shalom, shalom, shalom. All right. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh, Double honors once again to the Apostles' Great Millstone, told me this truth, and who rule well. This is Naaman of the DC camp. And this article is from face to face Africa.com. All right. Hopefully, hope, let me get this out of the way. All right, and this article is about, uh, and this is from, she does uh, put forth her, and uh, it's another brother, I, his name escapes me right now, uh, but her name is Mildred Europa Taylor. Hmm, Europa. Hmm. It says, at 15, Philippa became the first, I'm just going to read it verbatim, black queen of England you probably didn't know. In that quote, it says, the most courteous, liberal, and notable lady that ever reigned in her time. All right. Look at that. And this is Charlotte. This is on the cover of uh, um, in the book that the majority of Hebrew Israelites have. All right. And it traces the lineage of... Um, Israelites that rule Europe. Alright. Charlotte of Mecklenburg. Alright. And once again, I don't understand this thing. It keeps. It's like it's got a. Here we go. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> that is how French poet and historian Jean Froissart describes Philippa who is believed to be the first black queen of England. Well loved and respected by all her gentleness and compassion, Philippa spent much of her time following the English army of her husband, King Edward III's military campaigns. Which begs the question again, we all know the answer at heart, but why won't we taught this in schools? Hmm, maybe because certain people, we all know who, all right, who have serious, serious issues, all right, with their own image, <laughs> all right, we're talking about Esau Edom here, all right, they're just insecure pieces of shit, all right. Her tenure as the Queen of England helped maintain peace and led to the establishment of both the coal and textile industries of England. While sources say became the two primary sources of England's national wealth for many years. Alright. Philippa was the daughter of William of Hainault, a lord and part of what is now Belgium, which was then known for its successful textile industry. Born in 1314 with black Moorish ancestry. Her would-be husband and his mother, Isabella, visited the Count of Hanot while she was still young. Isabella wanted support for her planned revolt against her husband, King Edward II. Gaining support from the Count of Hanot, Isabella, as a form of gratitude, promised to marry her son to one of the Count's four daughters if she succeeded. And she did succeed, getting her husband captured and imprisoned in 1326 I remember this story, but I didn't, here we go, there was a book called, um, it was fiction, they even made a movie, a movie out of it, it was called, um, was it Timeline? Mm. It was a good book, the movie was so-so, uh, alright, it says he would later be murdered on orders from Isabella. At the time of his death, his son, Prince Edward, who was then 16, had been crowned as King Edward III. Isabella ruled as regent together with her lover, Roger Mortimer, and this enabled her to exercise extensive power over her son. Had some wicked jakes back then, all right? As gratitude for Count Williams, as the apostles have already said, as a gratitude for Count Williams' help in removing the king, Williams' daughter, Philippa, was betrothed to, King, to uh, Edward III, and in 1327, 
When she was only 14, she arrived in England. The following year, at the age of 15, they married and Philippa was crowned queen in 1330 while heavily pregnant with her first child. By June of 1330, Philippa gave birth to her first child, a son named Edward, after his father. The birth of the heir, who would later become a renowned military leader, was met with so much excitement in London. It was during this time period that an 18-year-old Edward III felt that it was high time he took over the reins of power for himself without his mother's interference. Thus, at the end of that year, he banished his mother from the court and had her lover Mortimer killed. By the following year, Philippa had begun making plans to bring the clothing industry to England, having seen how the industry contributed wealth to her homeland. She had her husband invite over a Flemish weaver and his apprentices with their help. Philippa, in four years, established a manufacturing colony at Norwich, monitoring the workers as much as she could. Eventually, Norwich spread its technology of cloth production to other cities, making textile production one of the significant sources of revenue for England. During these years specifically, between 1333 and 1345, she followed the English army on her husband's military campaigns in Scotland and France, giving birth to eight more children. Damn. In 1346, when her husband Edward III planned a major invasion of France, he made her regent in his absence an unusual position for a queen consort. But she did not disappoint, especially when her husband's old enemy, King David II of Scotland, invaded England. Philippa, in the absence of her husband, assembled an army and defeated the King of Scotland in battle, taking him prisoner. Philippa may have had all the experience needed in military issues, but that didn't take away her compassion and calmness, attributes that contrasted those of her husband. Records show that on several occasions she pleaded forgiveness for Edward III's victims, whether guilty or not, after her husband's victory of Calais in 1346, he planned to execute the six leading men of the town, but she intervened and asked him to spare their lives. When Philippa and Edward III returned to England in 1347, she found new ways to expand England's economy and founded the coal mining industry, which flourished in London. But things soon turned sour when the bubonic plague, I knew this was going to this, reached England the following year, killing two of her 14 children. Like I say, Jake was wicked, all right? And this is a plague sent upon them because of their wickedness. And this enabled Esau Edom, all right, to eventually overtake us and come back into power, all right? Thus, the Renaissance, all right? It says, in the 1350s, Philippa brought many artists and scholars from Hainault who contributed to English culture. The motherly woman, whom England greatly loved, unfortunately suffered from dropsy around 1367, and in two years she passed away at the age of 55 and was buried at Westminster Abbey. All right. So, wow, this really wrecks this idea that Esau Edom, the so-called white man, had always ruled Europe. And you notice there's always this, this Dark Ages period they never really go into, and we know why. Because they weren't ruling. All right, hence, again, Renaissance. If you were always ruling, there would be no need for a Renaissance. All right? But people tend to overlook that, especially those people. All right? Known as the foremother of all future English monarchs, Philippa's death took a toll on not only her husband, Edward III, but the whole country. It is said that he never really recovered, and before his death in 1377, he even had a beautiful sculpture made of her tomb, which is seen today at Westminster Abbey. So it's not of a so-called white woman, an Edomite. It's of a Jake, an Israelite. The Queen's College, Oxford, is also named after Philippa. Hmm. It was founded by one of her chaplains, Robert D. Ing Iglesfield, in her honor. So it's not about red, leprous, Edomites, so-called white people. 
it's of a so-called black woman, an, a, an Israelite. Wow. Just throw that, throw that out there. Uh, again, more and more of this, these lies. All right. All this is coming to the forefront, to the surface. And says God is black. All of Europe royalty was black. Renaissance means to redo. <laughs> During the Renaissance, they whitewashed our art and stole our history. User 2285. So what else is new? Our history has been quelled for centuries in all countries and tongues. Princess Charlotte, mm -hmm, Germany. There have been other black princes in Queens of England, all right. Roy Chu says, finally, the true history is coming out. Yeah, another indication of this devil is going down. All the things he tried to suppress, all right, he can't do that anymore. I often use the, uh, put forth that image of, you know, the little Dutch boy with the dike and putting the fingers everywhere and the water, you know, <laughs> all these leaks, all right. Leaks representing uh, this information that's coming out on this devil and the shit he's tried to hide. Can't do it anymore. All right. Now with this coronavirus outbreak and they're liable just to shut everything down. All right. And uh, institute the chip. You never know because it's having a uh, dramatic effect on the economies. This is going world now, but uh, certain resources uh, that are being directed towards coronavirus uh, affects everything else, or uh, you know, negative to, negatively. All right, like medical supplies. So what are the rest of the other people going to do? <laughs> you know, so this could be. Uh, hey, this could be it, Akim. All right. Pray for shorter days. All right, for the elect's sake. All right. So uh, let's see. As a matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Before my phone goes out. All right. <clears throat> this is Matthew twenty-four. And 22, whoop, as soon as it catches up with me here. Here it is. Matthew chapter 24 and 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right? And that's what we have to hope and pray for, all right? Get the hell up out of this place. It never was for us. Like I said, this has been the bane of our existence. This is death. All right. This is uh, Second Ezra's two. All right. And thirteen. It says, "Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. All right. And that's something we should always, already be doing. All right. Uh, in fact, let's go to Second Peter. 
again waiting for it to catch up with me there we go and this is second Peter chapter 3 I mean second Peter 3 and 10 it says but the day of the most high Yahweh will come as a thief in the night all the more reason why you should stay prayed up and uh, stay in the scriptures it says in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and continue to watch current events all right and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved this is all temporal all right what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness 12 looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the most high Yahweh wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat all right 13 nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelt righteousness and there you go let's go to Hebrews 11 all right Hebrews 11 and 16 but now they desire a better country that is in heavenly wherefore the most high is not ashamed to be called their power for he hath prepared for them a city all right Hebrews 13 and 14 for here have we no continuing city Micah 2 and 10 all right this is why we need to come up out of her out of the ways of this this wicked ass society all right it says Hebrews 13 and 14 for here have we no continuing city but we seek one to come all the more reason to hasten the day of the downfall of this bitch all right so with that I hope whoever sees this is edified all right and uh, come to the realization that uh, <laughs> this bitch is falling apart. All right. Hooray. All right. So with that, I hope whoever sees this is edified. Uh, uh, once again, call Halal Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Bahashim And again, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone. All right. Who told me this truth? All right, salutations to the Akim out there on the highways and byways, pushing this truth, all honest and sincerity. Trying to wake up the hopefully remaining, hopefully elect. All right, so with that, Shalom and a Baba Bar.